What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony. Hello, hello. I will leave a link to Tony's channel, like always, in the description of this video. Tony's actually going to be showing off. Okay, so he always does this rogue decks and all these really cool things. He's actually going to be showing off something a little bit more meta today. A little bit. A little bit more meta today. Uh, I'm just going to let you take over, Tony. Go ahead. All right, so we are uh, profiling Labyrinth today. We're profiling Labyrinth today. Granted, this is more, uh, kind of more something I've been experimenting with. I feel like the better build of Labyrinth at this point will still be playful floodgates play erad until they ban that card but this build kind of i think takes advantage more of the additional pieces you got out of uh i think was it's not Syac duelist nexus and i think i just want to showcase what that deck can do okay anyway starting off we have of course have the three ariana uh, on normal summon it searches for any labyrinth card it searches for your monsters searches for your back row really good card additionally it has that effect where if a monster will be leaving the field by a normal trap effect you draw a card and then you can special summon a fiend from your hand or set it as a spell and trap card it's actually really nice it's a advantage for the fact that your trap deck kind of moves monsters by normal trap effects and we're kind of going to be focusing on that more than anything yep. but in most cases it's just one of the four normal summons you actually have in the deck at all okay yeah from there we then have the one lovely labyrinth of the silver castle uh this card is a boss monster that really doesn't have a way to special on itself outside of your traps but it is powerful enough that you should genuinely at least play one so while on the field your opponent cannot respond to your normal trap effects or trap cards with monster effects this means that if your opponent's putting up a bunch of negates it means nothing to your dogmatica punishment which by the way we're playing dogmatica we're this. playing dogmatic punishment uh we're playing dogmatic in this more importantly if a monster will leave the field by one of your normal traps it doesn't have to be opponents it also can be yours and that's relevant uh you can destroy one card on the field or in their hand and that is extremely relevant because it's a non-targeting removal effect that can just hand rip late game or just start t picking away pieces uh, early game. Yep. Additionally, while it's on the field, you could target a normal trap in your graveyard and set it, but it can only be activated while you control a fiend monster. This is a way for your deck to keep going as long as you maintain this card, and you'll be maintaining this card a lot. Okay. Sadly, without a special summon condition, this card can be a brick, but fortunately, by the fact that Ariana can special summon fiends with her second effect, it means that there are scenarios where by removing a monster on your opponent's side of the field, you can get this out even if you break with it. Okay. The more likely boss monster you'll be playing is one of your three Lady Labyrinth of the Silver Castle. Uh, this card can be special summoned as long as you've activated a Labyrinth or a Normal Trap this turn. So you can activate on your you can special summon on your opponent's turn, you can special on your turn. It's 2900 defense, it's 3k attack, it's going to be a big beefy body. While it's on the field and you control a set card, it cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. This is insanely relevant because you'll be stabilizing a lot of times early game off of just the fact that your opponent cannot get rid of it. And while it's on the field, if you were to activate a normal trap, this card can chain to that normal trap, so it has to chain to that normal trap, to set another normal trap from your deck. This is any normal trap. And that means that in the situations where you're seeing in the meta, you could set things like Eradicator and then find a way to activate it and just end the game if you really wanted to. It's crazy. Yeah. So there's that. This is, but this, in most cases, you'll be going normal summon Ariana, search for this. And because you've activated Ariana as a Labyrinth card, it's special summons to the field, which lets you also exceed if you, or Link if you really wanted to as well. But in most cases, it's just going to be the body that you're going to use it to beat down your opponent with. From there, we then have the one Stovey Torby. Uh, Stovey Torby, while it's in the hand or field, can send itself from the hand or field and a card from your hand to then set a Labyrinth card from your uh, Labyrinth spell or trap from your deck to the field. This, in most cases, will be used to set one of your welcome Labyrinth cards, which will let you special summon your bigger monsters. But in some cases, it also lets you set the field spell, which actually is really relevant to making any of your Labyrinth spell and traps be impactful to the field. Uh, likewise, if a monster would leave the field by a normal trap effect, it can special summon itself back to the field, which makes it continuous advantage if you wanted to immediately recycle. Now, you could be playing the Chandraglier, which is the level three version of this, but the reason why we're playing this is the fact that one, it's field advantage, which is a little better than hand advantage that Chandraglier provides by adding itself back to the hand, and two, it's a level two, which is extremely relevant with all your level eights in making a specific synchro monster. And we'll talk about that later. But in most cases, this is just the single, uh, single, uh, the only, si the singular furniture that we're playing in this deck. I know you can play the full package, but I feel like with Droll kind of in this weird, like, state of not sure if it's going to be here, and Ash being at an all time, the furnitures do not get the full value, and you're commonly just going to be seeing too many of those and not interaction. Anyway, from there, we then have the only other normal summon deck in the one Dogmatica Cleesha of the Virtuous. So this card on summon searches for any Dogmatic card. This will be Dogmatica Punishment in all your scenarios. Uh, 
And that's kind of it. It's such as punishment, which is a normal trap that removes monsters on the field and that sets your all entire combo, but it also lets you play something like the Deer Servants, which will actually have some really cool incidental synergy with the deck. Likewise, in certain scenarios, you can actually make extract monsters, which will let you special summon this, so it's never really dead. And in worst case scenario, if you run out of punishments, you pitch it for your uh, furniture card, and then you're good. It's never really dead, and for that reason, it's good to have one. Okay. Anyway, we're then moving on to the spells by playing one Labyrinth Labyrinth. Uh, I know a lot of decks have cut this card, but I think this card is extremely important. First off, if you activate a Welcome Labyrinth card, it adds the additional effect to that card that non-targets destroys a card in the field. Uh, all your Welcome Labyrinth cards that you're playing in this deck do not do anything but summon a monster, which means if you're seeing a bunch of those and no actual interaction, you can summon all your monsters in the world. It will not change the fact that your opponent is going to go off over you. Yeah. So you need to see this card sometimes to turn those cards into actual threats. Additionally, if you would activate a non-Labyrinth Normal Trap, however, it summons back a Fiend from your graveyard. This can be relevant because it can summon back Ariana's, it can summon back any of your beaters, it's a way to recur your beaters on the field, but it also conveniently summons back any Fiend, and that can do some really funny things if you really want it to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the one of you again because you can also set it off of your furniture as well, so you actually don't really need to play more than one. And worse comes to worst, if your opponent gets rid of it, at least they got rid of this over something else that might, might have mattered. Okay. Anyway, moving on, we're playing three Nadir Servant. This is a way to grab into your one Dogmatic Ecclesia. It grabs it back from the graveyard, so that's why you only need to play one. Likewise, the idea here is that one, this lets me send a lot of my extra deck monsters to the graveyard, a lot of them actually having some really cool synergy with your Labyrinth cards, but two, it searches into a card that actually lets me get into a normal trap. As much as I want to play like the full package of like Poss and uh, Extravagance to try to draw those cards, I'd rather have the control of being able to actually see removal and guarantee removal over... Hoping. Hoping to roll the dice and seeing absolutely nothing. Yep. So this is a card for that reason, but it's the cards that it sends that are actually going to be extremely relevant here. And when we get to the extract, I think you'll start to see the value of why this card is actually really good. Okay. Anyway, we're still playing two extravagance. Uh, we don't need the three because realistically, they, you, don't, you already have the deers, and this is just another advantage piece. Realistically, I'd rather this be Pross, but I'm been, you can mess around with either, and I think they get about the same advantage one way or another. Okay. Uh, then, moving on to the another little engine we're playing, we're playing two Freezing Curses, one uh, Flashing Fire, and one Destruction of Runic cards. Uh, so this is going to sound a little weird. Uh, these cards have a few purposes in this deck. First off, they're great going second cards. If my opponent has built a board, these allow me to either remove monsters on the field, negate their effects, or blow up a, a problematic spell and trap that might, be a, uh, that might linger on the field. However, it's the effect that they can special monsters from the X deck that becomes a little more relevant. A lot of the monsters you summon from the X deck have amazing toolbox effects. For example, since we're in uh, Dune, we have Slepnir. Slepnir, on your turn, lets you target itself and a monster you controls and blink them till the end phase, which means any one of these spells and traps lets me turn off a monster for that turn if I think that's a threat. Or I, you know, I could just remove it if I wanted to. But more importantly, it lets me summon Hogan instant speed why is that relevant because i could be playing things like uh lord of the heavenly prison but if i reveal lord of the heavenly prison my opponent just won't will just opt to not activate their destruction this way i could set this card and going to my opponent's turn my opponent will still attempt to burn that spell and trap and i will have a way to get through that removal without actually knowing that's gonna uh, without while knowing that's gonna be there that way i actually burn through it and then i can move on with my plays it's protection it's interaction it's a way going second it's versatile for that reason i'm not playing the full like fountain all that stuff though but this is i think it's just the bare minimum just to let you have something to go second with okay yeah yeah then, from there, we then have, of course, the Call by the Grave. Uh, as it turns out, this deck kind of crumbles under Ash, so you really do need some ways to at least deal with the fact that your opponent might have Ash, and you have to respect it for that reason. Moving into the tra Traps, which I think kind of makes the entire deck, we have three Welcome Labyrinth and three Big Welcome Labyrinth. Both of these cards have the effect, when activated, to special summon a Labyrinth monster from somewhere. This summons it from the deck. This summons it from practically anywhere. You can summon it from hand, deck, or graveyard. And this... The fact someone from Graveyard is relevant in reusing the singular uh, lady, uh, lovely labyrinth in your deck. But while this is, uh, but in doing so, additionally, it then bounces a card you control to the hand. This you may think is a negative advantage, but if you've already controlled a monster on the field and you were to summon another labyrinth monster from your deck, and bouncing the other monster, you all that new labyrinth monster will be on the field to see the monster be removed by your normal trap incidentally just triggering the effect immediately so in a lot of situations going first you'll go normal summary arena grab big welcome you'll set the big welcome and when you activate it on that turn you can summon out something like your lovely labyrinth to bounce the ariana reusing it but also triggering the conditions to blow up a card this is the nice. 
kind of the only uh, inherent removal that the, these cards can provide you, but they both have actually some a lot of really good recursion as well. If a monster would leave the field by a normal trap effect, this resets itself to the field on a turn that it was not sent to the graveyard. So once you have two of these in your graveyard, one in the grave, one on the field, you'll start just Instead cycling of looping them. them. You'll start cycling them, nice. looping them that way. This card wants in the graveyard, can banish stuff from the graveyard, except for the turn when you special summon, uh, activated special summon effect, to target a card you control and bounce it to your hand. This, of course, can trigger things like this. It's another way to do so. But in a situation where you control a level 8 or higher fiend, you can instead choose one of your opponent's monsters instead. Which means if you control something like one of your lovely labyrinths or your lady labyrinths, this is also removal that applies to their effects as well. And that just makes it, I, this is, again, a little bit of additional interaction for them. But with something like the actual Labyrinth Labyrinth Field Spell, they then become removal that then snowballs into more effects that just helps you build the deck a lot better. Okay. From there, we then have three Torrential Tribute. I know people like have this weird thing where they don't want to play Torrential Tribute, but I, I've never seen a scenario where clearing your opponent's monsters on their turn was ever a bad thing. Especially in a format where you see things like rescue uh, become a little more relevant. Re uh, getting Torrential on a rescue field is so much more impactful than it yeah. is, I think, in any other deck. Yeah. From there, we then have two Dogmatic Punishment. This is just another removal that you can also set next deck pieces to. Uh, it is hard once per turn, so this is why like, you don't want to play max out on any of these traps. But they're still decent because they will trigger all your Labyrinth effects. Uh, the one Compulse, the Bounce. This used to be better back when you had, like, tears that were relevant. But now if you bounce back a Fenrir... That's really bad we'll just, for you. We'll just do it again. Yeah, so... But this card, however, is a little more relevant. This is uh, Terrors of the Overview. You target a card on the field, you target a card in your opponent's graveyard. You swap them with a the the card that comes back being set. Which means in a lot of situations, I can target an Ash in my opponent's graveyard and target a monster on their field, and I just replace that monster on the field with a set Ash that they can't do anything with. Okay. What's surprisingly powerful about this card is that even if they get rid of the card in the graveyard, it sends the card on the field first before sending the card in the graveyard. Which means even if they get rid of the card in the graveyard, it will not stop the removal, and that's all that you need to care about for the, all your Labyrinth fields, uh, all your Labyrinth effects. Okay. We, of course, have the one Eradicator, because if the worst comes to worst, you can still blow out your opponent. Now, this is something I wanted to point out, because it was uh, you probably have seen in a lot of live streams. There's a really cool thing you could do with this if you can use its effect in chain to that. So let's say you use some effect to remove a monster off your opponent's field, right? You can go chain link one this, chain link two this. Uh, sacking the lovely that. In doing so, you rip out all your opponent's spell and traps, and then you can use this card to rip out whatever's left. Oh. oh and yeah, that is exactly, gonna... and that's I think exactly how I think the, I think the Euro Nats went. He went Eradicator, tore all the spell and traps, and guess what? He has one card left in hand. Let me take that out as well. And now you you're handless. Damn. And that's exactly why Eradicator needs to go. Yeah, that guy needs to go. I I, I can respect the fact that a, a powerful card. Okay, is wait, wait, wait. If someone were to play this deck, okay. And uh, if they're watching this video after the ban list and this card is banned, what would you play instead of this? So I actually have, like, weirdly enough, like a bunch of weird options that I was still tinkering around with. Obviously, there's the idea that you could play this, like, Altergeist and actually just slap in evenly matches. Because okay. guess what? Uh, in the same way that Altergeist can special some multi-faker, you can special summon out Lovely uh, lovely Labyrinth if you activate a normal trap on your turn. Yep. So you can evenly your opponent and then special summon a monster. That's really nice. Uh, additionally, there's options like, for example, Daruma Cannon. This is a way to get rid of, like, un uh, unaffected monsters, like Purely, which might spring up after a ban list. Uh, likewise, I believe you could play actual floodgates if you really wanted to. But another one I thought about was just Ice Dragon Prison because Ice Dragon Prison is actually not the worst card. It has interactions against things, for example, like Rescue. It has actually decent interactions against Dragon Link. It's a card that I think is respectable regardless of the format. At worst, it's graveyard uh, disruption. So if this card gets banned, you guys have options. Here are your options. Yeah, consider these. At this point, any normal chat that removes things probably works out in your favor. That's fair. Yeah. So that's why the, like this is it's just one of the four that you might want to try out. Okay. Anyway, from there we have to strike because this is less for your opponent. It's more for the Ash. Yeah. If you activate any of your uh, Welcome Labyrinths because they special from deck and your opponent Ashes you, sometimes that just completely just train derails your entire train of advantage. So this is a way to respond to the Ash. But it also means if your opponent doesn't actually have like an interaction that you don't have Lovely Labyrinth on the, uh, uh, the Silver Castle on the field to make them all unresponsible. This is a way to just seal the hole and just turn all that removal yep. to live. It's also good going first and second. It, yeah. Uh, then we have, of course, three imperm. This is just trap negation. Why not? Or sorry, monster effect negation that you can go in first or second. And then the one trap trick again. Any of the traps that I mentioned, a lot of them are one ofs, but the ones that are relevant, which is the uh, which is any of your welcome labyrinths, as well as the dogmatic punishment. Those are kind of the trifecta that you want to have immediate access to in a lot of your games. Okay. Yeah.
Perfect. And this is 40 cards in the main deck. This is 40 cards. Okay. Anyway, going to the extra deck, uh, we, this deck deck is going to sound a little weird. Uh, we start off with the removal, and a lot of them are just going to be cards that we kind of launching off into Deer Servant and Dog Management. Okay. But with removal, we have three uh, Malong, and, or two Malong and two Entis. Both of these, when sent to the graveyard, will move monster off the field. This will destroy a card on the field. This will target a card on the field and bounce it. Uh, funny enough, I think this can bounce your cards as well. Let me check. The, 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 the. Nope, it's your opponent's card. Never mind. But it targets a face-up card on the field and bounces it. So it's a way to just bounce your, uh, get rid of your opponent's cards on the field uh, in chain to something like a punishment. It's really relevant because there's a lot of effects that special summon themselves from the hand. So you can go, when they activate the effect special on that monster, you go chaining one punishment to destroy the monster, sending Entis, and then a new chain activate the Entis effect to blow up the monster they attempt to special summon. Okay. So, yeah. really nice. Uh, from there, we then have uh, one Garuda, because it's just another, it's a way that if you activate the new servant, you could dump this to get an additional draw for a functional plus two. But in most cases, what you're actually going to be sending is one of your two Chimera, the King of the Mythical Beasts. Okay, so or the King of the Phantom, Phantom Beasts. Beasts. Okay, so this is a new card that just came out in Dune. So yeah, uh, ignore the actual effect on this card, because you're never going to actually be able to summon this card. What's relevant is, on your opponent's turn, you can banish this card to summon back any fiend from your graveyard. That includes all of your other ladies. That includes any of your Labyrinth monsters. So right. a lot of situations, you can summon back the ladies. But in more cases, it's a way to recover something like your Ariana's to continue building your board. Yep. It's a way to save yourself from OTKs. There's, uh, especially when your opponent goes Axis Code to clear your field, and this is the only thing you have to save yourself. It's a really solid piece that you can dump. And both of these, I want to point out, are beast is moss beast dish monsters the wing beast and a beast and that becomes super relevant when you play things like your bucephalus bucephalus is a 3500 attack monster which means if you're sending it for punishment it functionally kills anything at this yeah. point but in doing so it'll let you dump one of these two pieces for modularity this is especially relevant if you're going to be sending this off into dear servant because it plays around droll a little bit you can send this off into dear servant and in doing so if your opponent decides to droll it's going to be in the same chain as this and in doing so if you want to instead if they draw you can send the chimera instead if they don't draw you can send the guru and draw instead okay it's a way to kind of like play around the droll but it's also a 3500 body that inherently lets you uh actually like get rid, get rid of monsters with uh dogmatic punishment nice yeah then from there we then have of course the two hoogan for protection the two slepnir for the uh, banishing of your opponent's monsters in the main phase you can also actually banish monsters in your opponent's battle phase as well which can also save you games I don't, I, I, it's not as super relevant but it, it's just the cards that you make and then from there we have the one muckracker uh muckracker uh make can be made using two fiends can discard a card from your hand to summon back a fiend from your graveyard what this does in most cases it brings back one of your cards but it's actually a way to immediately start getting aggression on your field what i mean by that is that muckwrecker summons that monster in any position whereas what you can do is you can normal summon ariana to add the uh, lovely labyrinth lovely labyrinth will special summon itself in defense which means you can't attack with it but if you link yourself into a muckwrecker and then discard a card you bring back the lovely labyrinth in attack position instead and attack with it so it's a way to actually have an immediate 3k attack on the field if you really needed that aggression a long nice. time. Okay. It also has digital effect where if a monster you control will be destroyed, you could tribute a fiend instead, which means you could tribute this, and that means sometimes it protects us from battle. Nice. I'll, I'll take it as I can. And then the one Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel is a uh, level 10 fiend monster that can be made as long as you have a light or dark uh, monster, or uh, you could treat the tuner as any light or dark monster. So Why? even if it's not a tuner, it's even a tuner. Even if it's not it a tuner, which means yeah. that if with a level 8 like your lovely Labyrinth, and a level two, like your Stovey Torby, which continues to come back, you can make a Chaos Angel. Now, when you make a Chaos Angel this way, it can't be destroyed by battle, that's kind of cool. But on summon, on special summon in any way, it banishes a card on the field. Now, that is cool because it's just removal that you can make, but because it's a fiend, there's so many ways to bring this card back from the graveyard. You activate a normal trap, and your field spell bring this back to banish a card. Like, that's on your, so crazy. On your opponent's turn, you can banish the Chimera to bring this back and banish a card if you wanted to. Axis in this card, it's kind of just an additional benefit that once it hits the field, it's just going to be annoying 35 body. That will continue to get rid of your opponent's cards. That's crazy. Uh, granted, this is kind of, the, the the tightness of the extra kind of means that we, you realistically do want to play Prosp over Extravagance because you could just end up banishing all these cards if yeah. you kind of need them. But in a lot of scenarios, this will be made every once in a blue moon when you get the Stovey Torby on field. I do not think I could justify playing multiple Stovey Torby just to get Chaos Angel because it's just not the game plan a lot of times. You'll yep. get it, it will be helpful, but it's not what you really want to do. Uh, it's not the, the goal of the deck. Okay. And that's why we're not playing it. Perfect. And that kind of uh, simplifies the deck. I, I do a test hand, but I feel like... It's a trap deck. Yeah, like I could show you some of the cool interactions, but I uh, I don't think there's a lot that like I think you I could really nice. showcase. I could do yeah. a quick test hand to like see, the, show you the snowball, I guess. Sure, I guess we could do a quick test hand. I mean, there's no combos though, but let's do it. 
All right, so starting off, let's see what our hand is. We have a Deer Servant. We have a Trap Trick. We have a Dogmatic Punishment. We have a Welcome Labyrinth. And we have a Stovey Torby. Uh, I think this is honestly all I need. So we're going to start by activating this Nadir Servant. And we're going to use it first by sending a monster from our extra graveyard. In this case, we're going to send the Bucephalus. To then add Dogmatica Ecclesia. So this is a situation where you're talking about where after you add, if they drool you here, you don't send Garura. If they, yes. If they don't drool you. So in this specific chain, what's going to happen is this is going to be chaining one. Yep. And because I've added a card, your opponent can directly draw you here. And if they draw you, you now can choose instead of sending the Garura to instead send the Chimera. Yep. So let's say in this theory, they actually do draw us. We will probably send the Chimera. And you know what? That's honestly A-OK. -okay. Why? Because we don't really need this Ecclesia anyway. We'll send it for our Stovey Torby and we'll use it with the traps I have. I think I'm actually going to set the field spell. Okay. And then we set three and that's all the interaction we're going to need right now. Okay. All right. Are you going to activate the oh, field we're going to activate the yeah, 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 activate Let's spell. activate that. Now, going on our opponent's turn, we're going to actually do this in a really specific order. Most likely what you want to start by doing here is you're going to first want to activate the punishment first, getting rid of one of your opponent's monsters. In doing so, you'll get to send another card from your hand to the graveyard. Let's say in this case, we have to get launch something like a another, uh, we have to launch a big, get rid of a big monster. So we're going to send this and we're going to use this to send Garura. Okay. Garura will draw us a card, but since we remove a monster by a normal trap effect, we'll also be able to bring back the Selby Toby to our field. Now, this card can't do anything, but thanks to Toby Toby, we can technically launch this. But instead, what we're actually going to be able to do is then we're going to be act able to activate the Welcome Lab Labyrinth and then special summon a monster from our deck. Of which we'll grab the Ariana. In doing so, this will prevent the additional effect, and then we'll blow up a card they control. That's a secondary removal. Additionally, if you really wanted to, and you didn't feel like the advantage was uh, extremely pertinent, this is another scenario where you can instead summon out the Lovely Labyrinth and blow up a card, and doing so trigger this effect to blow up another card. Yep. And ironically enough, if you're going to do that, you can actually at that point then just go activate the trap trick to grab something, to, like grab the third trap. But regardless, now you get rid of two cards. And then, worst comes worst, you're going to activate the trap trick, and using that, you're going to banish this to grab a Welcome Labyrinth, using the Welcome Labyrinth to then summon out a third monster. Bouncing the Soviet over to your hand. Yep. Or you can also just bounce this back and special summon it again if you really want to. But in doing so, you essentially do doing, doing this, you once again trigger the effect of your field spell to blow up another card. That's three cards removed from the field, two cards that are big on the field. And if your opponent has anything, you can discard this to reset set another labyrinth spell and trap. In this case, let's say another welcome labyrinth for follow-up so that even if they clear this field this is what you could do on your following turn so you start your following turn at this point with very little to actually work off of but you can go activate the welcome labyrinth in doing so you'll summon about any monster from your deck in this case let's say the ariana in doing so you'll blow up a card you'll go chinning one uh, then you'll trigger this to then search for another labyrinth card in this case let's say i mean it's snowballing right you're just popping a ton of cards you're gonna be popping a lot of cards you'll also once again then trigger the stovey torber to bring itself back from the field you'll be triggering this to reset itself to the field and then at any point you want to special on this card you now have this life to bounce a card yeah and this means that like even if you somehow have gotten to the point where you just have nothing at all to work with you kind of can rebuild from here and this is not considering the fact that even if they cleared your field you still have this live in the grave to bring back anything so worst comes worst on their end phase that they cleared your field, you can just go activate this to bring back the lovely labyrinth, and the lovely labyrinth can reset any of the traps you've already used this turn. So you're always just gonna keep building. You're always able to continuously keep building and keep repairing, and that kind of is the theme of the deck I wanted to go with over flip skill drain and then just play. Beat yeah. Okay. As much as I think that probably is a little better sometimes. Okay. Well, t Tony, thank you for the profile. I think this is really fun, and uh, I guess this is the most meta you are gonna see you. Ah, uh, I do play meta decks. But, I just don't want to play meta decks. Yeah, I feel you. Anyways, thank you for the video. I appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Again, check out his channel. Link is in the description. And with that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.